Is this little budget-friendly 17mm f1.4 lens the budget alternative to the Sigma 16mm f1.4? I think once you see the sample footage, I think you're going to be quite surprised. And the shot you're seeing right now is shot on this little 17mm f1.4. And I will put links in the description down below to this lens. It can be hard to find at times, and the price does vary. So I will update those links in the description down below. Now, the Sigma 16mm is mainly popular as a YouTube lens or a walk around video lens or a snapshot lens or a low light photo and video lens. And I've taken out this little 17 millimeter f1.4 and I've basically tried to test it in all those same scenarios. And I do have a few shots included in these samples, which actually give you a back to back comparison between the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 and this little 17 millimeter f1.4. And I think what you're going to find is any difference that is there is actually ever so slight. Now this first series of samples was taken at an exhibit. It was a Vincent van Gogh sort of moving video or multimedia presentation of his work. It's sort of a, it's a touring thing. They're sort of going around the world and exhibiting this. And what they've done is they've taken um, his famous paintings and some less famous paintings and they've turned them into a digital format and they have projected them on the walls of this room and they have them moving all around and they have put music to them. And essentially what you do is you basically just go into this giant room, which has some sort of tiny little side rooms off it and such. And for the most part, you just kind of sit and absorb this, I don't know, a projected performance or multimedia performance. I'm not sure what you would call it. So, and you can sit in there as long as, as you like. They have different session times. So you get a session time and you show up at this time and they allow a certain number of people in at a, in a certain amount of time. But it really was kind of a unique way to experience and see his, his works. And if you know his work well, you would recognize some of his famous works. Uh, but they also had some of his less famous works. And if you're somebody that isn't really an art person, it was a neat way to kind of have this experience. And they basically went through his different artworks and and they did it as if it as if it was his life so they started with his early work went with his later work and they actually had the the artwork and the presentation go over the course of his life which eventually ended in his death and that was demonstrated by his photos and the multimedia sound and i won't ruin it for you just in case you do decide to go to it but it really was a cool experience and it did draw some emotions and and people of all ages really really loved it and Anyways, I took this little 17 millimeter to this and I got a fair bit of video, a fair bit of photo, and I was super, super happy with what I got from it. And I thought it was actually kind of nice to use this lens. It has kind of this almost a vintage style, a vintage character to it and use it in this sort of multimedia sort of modern representation of old art because this is like a modern lens with kind of a vintage look and feel to it a bit. I thought it was a really cool way and a cool place to use that lens. Now the next place I took it was the Melbourne Museum in Melbourne, Australia and they had an exhibition on for a Triceratops. It was a special Triceratops exhibit and they had this and I don't know what I would call it. It was like a bronzed tri Triceratops skeleton and once again, it was kind of a bit of a multimedia feeling thing. And they had all these different lights that they would project down on this bronze skeleton of the Triceratops, which gave it all these different looks and, and feels. And then they had sort of music playing in the background. But one thing that I noticed when I was shooting this is certain lenses, uh, when they get um, sun flare or what they call sun stars, or you have a bright light shining into them, they they can exhibit some very interesting characters as far as the way that that bright light is rendered. And in this case, there were some bright lights coming down from behind the Triceratops skeleton. And you got these really, really interesting sun stars. I mean, I just, this is something that you would probably normally go into your Instagram filter or you apply some filter to get but these shots are right out of camera completely unedited and I thought they looked really really cool and it's something I hadn't heard anybody talk about when talking about this lens and something that I didn't even know this lens could or would do so 
I thought the style and the feel that these sort of stun sun stars or sort of bright light stars gave to the footage or the photos was super, super cool. I really, really liked that. And even for the little bits of video footage that I that I used in this situation with it, it worked really, really well. And even though the lens is obviously not image stabilized because it's just an all manual lens, at 17 millimeters, that's wide enough that the camera shake isn't too bad and it's totally usable. And if you are using an editor where you can stabilize that video footage, it stabilizes very well and sort of very easily. So I think at 17 millimeters, it is totally usable for video as well as photo. Now, obviously it's an inexpensive lens. It isn't a perfect lens and there are some sort of advantages and disadvantages to this lens. And the first thing I wanna say about this lens, it, it is built so, so well. And, and I think when you feel this lens it's pretty much all metal it's got a metal focus ring it's got a metal aperture ring and from a build quality perspective i'd say it's built every bit as well as the sigma 16 millimeter it's built every bit as well as really a high quality vintage lens out there the focus ring is super super smooth it's super easy to use and if you've ever used a lens and manually focused a lens that is an autofocus lens that you're not actually moving the elements, you're actually just telling the camera's electronics to move the elements. It is a whole different story when manually focusing a lens that is designed to manual focus. It's so much easier, it's so much smoother on the manual lens, that's what it's designed to do, and you really have a lot more control. So. If you ever struggled to manual focus sort of one of these automatic lenses like the Sigma 16 millimeter in the past, I don't want that to discourage you from trying to use a lens like this because I promise you it is a completely different story. Now I found the image sharpness to be very good just like you're seeing in this video, just like you saw in the shots, even the comparisons between the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4. I will say that the image is sharpest in the middle and at times if you want to get the sharpest image you might want to stop it down, particularly if you want to get those corners a bit sharper, you might stop it down to sort of f2, f2.8. But I was I was super happy with it. There was never a time that I was using this lens and then I was looking at the, the results of the photos or video and I thought I needed to be sharper. That absolutely wasn't the case. It was plenty sharp enough and I thought the image was great. The other thing that can sometimes happen with third-party lenses is sometimes they can skew your colors or the colors don't look accurate or the colors don't look the same as they do with sort of one of the lenses, the native mount lenses for the camera. I'm certainly finding this not to be the case. This obviously has some very good multi-coated optics. It's got modern multi-coat. And I find that the, the colors are accurate and the colors mix well. And if you take a photo with one of your sort of Canon or Sony or Fuji or whatever camera you're using, and then you put this one on, I don't think you're gonna see a huge color shift. I think that those photos and video is going to mix well between the different lenses. Now, as I said, it's not a perfect lens. So there are a few negative points. And the first one is you do get a fair bit of vignetting, particularly at f1.4, you are going to get some darkening around the corners. Now, if you are shooting photos, you can fix that in editing editing. If you're shooting video, you can even fix that in editing, depending on what kind of program you're using. But for the most part, with a lens like this, and when you're shooting wide open, I actually don't mind the darkening of the corners. I actually think as long as you keep your subject kind of in the middle of frame, it's kind of an artistic thing. And I find with a lot of vintage lenses, you get that look as well. So the fact that you've got a little vignetting around the corners doesn't really bother me. Now, the lens does show some noticeable barrel distortion. Now, in most situations, you're not going to notice this. But if you are shooting straight lines, you will notice those lines are curving like this across the horizon and often at the sides curving like this. One thing I will say about barrel distortion, and people make a big deal about sort of barrel distortion, uh, pin cushion distortion, and other forms of distortion that lenses often give. If you look at, and I've been doing this recently, if you look at any Hollywood movie, you're going to find most Hollywood movies, particularly if they're using what's called an anamorphic lens, where you've got that really wide field of view and you've got sort of the letter boxes and it's cut down like this, you're actually gonna find that in most cases, there is a fair bit of distortion and even more distortion than this cheap little lens gives. It was only in situations where I'm actually shooting something where there was a very straight line that I actually noticed the distortion. And the one that I think a lot of people are gonna have a problem with, and I, I understand it, but I think if you haven't owned a manual focus lens, you need to get one of these, particularly this one, it's so inexpensive, and try it because the results are excellent. People are afraid of manual focus. And 
I agree. It is a lot easier to just push the button on top of your camera and have the camera focused for you. But we are talking about a lens in this case, which I think gives results, which are nearly on par with a lens that is three to four times the price. I also think that once you start to use manual focus, you get very, very good at it and you get very, very quick at it. And the modern cameras have a whole bunch of tools that help us use manual focus nowadays. And one of them is called focus peaking. And what focus peaking does is when you are trying to get your focus, it actually, the part of the image that is in focus actually highlights with sort of little stars or like a little outline, a little sort of glowing outline around that part of the image that is at its sharpest or is in focus. They also have like a click and zoom function where you can click and it will sort of crop in on the image. So when you're focusing, you're trying to focus on just that tight little small part. Uh, and the camera I've got here, I can go five times or 10 times. So those two tools make it very easy to make sure that you have accurate manual focus. And if you haven't used manual focus before, you will get good at it very quickly. And I even use manual focus now for street photography and snapshot photography, situations where you just need to be quick if you're going out shooting 30 or 40 minutes, by the end of it, you're gonna be surprised at how quick you are. So do not be afraid of manual focus. You might actually even find that you love manual focus and you feel more in touch with the camera and the art you're creating. I know that I do. Once I start shooting with manual focus lens, I really get into it and sometimes I don't wanna go back to the autofocus lens. So if you haven't tried a manual focus lens, be sure to give it a try and I think this is a good one to give a try to. Now, I think this lens is a perfect fit for what we're doing on this channel, and that is trying to get the best results in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell notification.